I'm Francine Huben, uh, creative director of Meccano Architects from Holland. And uh, Meccano is about 120 people based in the Netherlands. And uh, we are very, very multidisciplinary with people from 25 different countries. And we have, uh, we combine architecture with landscaping, urbanism, interior, even mobility and restorations. So we have, I call it my symphony orchestra. It's my life. <laughs> and I think it's uh, shaping um, the future. And it's, as an architect, you have to be at the same time very visionary about the future, but at the same time you're also serving the society. So it's it's both, and it's for me um, also shaping the world, be part of that. For me it's very important that you have very good eyes, that you very can observe very well what is needed and then come with in an integrated way, come up with new visionary ideas. But at the end is that the architecture is at the end for the local people who live there or, or, or the users. I always say for me it's the following up of first the people, then second is the place and third is the purpose. Um, because there's also a philosophy that you should base very much architecture on the purpose. but. I don't agree with that because one thing for sure is in the future the purpose will change. So it's more about uh, shaping, um, creating space for uh, even changes that you, you cannot predict. And that's also architecture and urbanism is about that. I think uh, how it is possible to be stay on innovative, first of all, is that we do different kind of um, commissions. I, sometimes I say I'm specialized in things I've never done before. And, and also to have this open attitude that you want to learn, you keep on learning new things and often it's not, you don't learn often not from other architects, but I also like to uh, learn from other disciplines. So, um, for instance, I learned a lot from the theatre world by working together with people uh, for stage design or I learned a lot about uh, uh, engineers, technical engineers from um, electrical engineers or of uh, new inventions about in materials. So it's very, you have to be very much updated of new techniques also or even how the world changed architecture by uh, all the new uh, tools we nowadays have, uh, if it's even I'm talking about the iPhone or even uh, because I'm now looking at a library but you know you used to uh, to design a silent library but that's totally old-fashioned to make a silent library but nowadays people and if people want to have this own atmosphere he can put on his own uh, vault on with a head, headset uh, and then you can have your own music and be uh, very quiet or you can have it totally uh, silent in a world what makes noises. So it's, it's things are changing um, and to be very much aware of that. And that's why I, I always say to uh, people in my own office, the architects, but also to students, you know, keep on uh, walking the streets, uh, observe the society. Also, now I'm Chile. But also if I'm in Taiwan or in the United States or in the United Kingdom or in my own country, the Netherlands, try to observe what is necessary. It's important as we as architects and urbanists that we also um, communicate very well with all the politicians because if you don't give them visionary ideas, the, the politicians, because at the end they are responsible for it. So we should also communicate very well with the politicians. I think it's very important, not only for yourself, but also to exchange ideas with um, people you know. Or you, uh, or, uh, and also you can learn from it, but you can also give your vision back. It's also important that architects also listen, not only talk. Uh, so it's kind of a two-way communication. Um, and I think what is very important that architects are not just, it's not just an aesthetic issue. 
Um, of course, you should make beautiful buildings and urbanism and landscaping, um, but it also should make sense. And especially uh, uh, commissions on a bigger scale, uh, they're often also quite political. And, uh, and then you have to also explain it to them and to come up with these ideas to these politicians. So for me it's important to give lectures, to write books, uh, to read books, but also to write them themselves, to try to force myself to write down what I think is very essential uh, in architecture, in urbanism, in society. Uh, it's important for me to come to other universities and meet the people there and also try to understand, also give my view and show my work to the students but for me it's also interesting to see what are the students doing here for instance in Chile or what are they doing in, in Boston or what are they doing in the Netherlands um, so this interaction between um, the students education but also by the decision makers uh, it's very essential We have websites and all these kind of things. Uh, we, uh, of course, the internet changed the whole world. Um, so for us, the, of course, the internet is very important. Even that, a lot of architecture magazines or like Architecture Daily are on the on the net is very essential. But also for us, the way we also use the internet is for communication. Like we do a lot of uh, because we do a lot of international works. We Skype a lot. I don't know if you, is that you also consider that of the internet. We the Webex. Uh, I use Twitter. I'm active on Twitter. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's a kind of new communication tool. But the only thing, you should not be addicted to it. <laughs> Otherwise it takes too much time. If you want to study architect, uh, don't think that you want to become an architect because you want to be famous or you want to be a star architect or that you think you want, will earn a lot of money. I think it should be also your passion. Uh, architecture is very much about teamwork. You're part of a symphony orchestra because uh, architecture is also very complicated. Most of the work, maybe just small houses, you can do all alone. But most of the time, the buildings we do, we uh, and the project we do, we do it with a whole team in the office, and everybody has his uh, added value. And. Um, Traveling is very essential. Don't stay behind the internet, don't stay behind the computer because it's so interesting because architecture, I always say, should touch all the senses. So you should really see it, uh, uh, hear the acoustics of the building, of the spaces. Is it well done or not? Is the daylight very, uh, is it good or not? Is, it, is, it, is the physics of the building very good? Uh, you should really experience architecture also as a, still, it's for me, for still very important but especially also if when you're a student of um, and you should enjoy it. I started uh, with friends of my university Meccano when we were still students but that was in the 80s uh, then it was a time there was a crisis in Europe the 80s it's maybe now a similar situation um, again now in Europe and but at that time there were not many good architecture firms so we didn't want to work in another office so we started our own office and we got a chance to do it in a different way but if I compare it uh, with 30 years ago uh, what is now asked from an architect is much more than when I started 30 years ago you would yeah, you need all the hardware, the software, uh, the, the, you, you need uh, 3D things. If you're more interested in architecture, uh, then, in, uh, then don't start your own firm, because if you start your own firm, you all have to all these do these bureaucratic things. <laughs> but we started with three and later five of us, and we had a kind of balance who did what in the office in, uh, where we started. And I'm very happy that my office, we, we get step by step bigger so I could all the demo all these bureaucratic stuff uh, uh, is done by uh, other people in the office <laughs> so I can totally focus on the on the visionary part and the creative parts so I but I'm very happy because we are yeah, 100, 120 people it's the size of a symphony orchestra